Welcome. I'm so glad that you're interested in powerful learning practice and the different professional learning experiences we offer. My name is Cheryl Nussbaum Beach and I am the CEO and co-founder of Powerful Learning Practice, which is a professional learning company for connected educators. We offer all different kinds of professional learning experiences, e-courses, our year-long job embedded connected learner experience. We have e-books and different kinds of publications that are created by the people that have gone through Powerful Learning Practice and are applying some of these uh, unique constructs back in their own local context. And then we also do customized professional learning experiences, both face-to-face -face and online experiences that we take and we build around the needs of your organization, your school, or your own personal learning. So today what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about the connected learner experience. So you can see I'm here on the website for Powerful Learning Practices Connected Learner Experience. And basically what it is, is a year-long job embedded connected learning experience. It's done by teams. Teams of educators come together. There's 20 teams that come together that make up a cohort or a community that go through this learning experience at the same time. So uh, there are two workshops, full day workshops that are involved in this. The first one happens in the fall as part of a kickoff and during that workshop there's usually a powerful keynote speaker who gives a provocative message around the culture shift that needs to take place in schools today. Then we work with teams. Coaches get to know their teams a little bit because this is a coached learning experience. We find out assumptions and expectations and really just give the lay of the land on what the cohort is going to be going through over the course of the year. The second webinar, I mean, a full day workshop, it happens in the spring of the year, usually in late May, June, and it's the culminating event. And that's a really exciting time because the culminating event allows um, the teams to come together and just celebrate the learning that's taken place over the course of the year. The uh, Everybody shares their action research findings and we build a collaborative action plan together. So it's, um, it's a true celebration and a chance to really uh, leverage the collective intelligence of the group. In between that, as you can see here, there are going to be one-to-one -one webinars um, that are in coached, in coached meetings that are going to take place between you as an individual and your team and helping you to deepen your understanding about what's going to be happening uh, in the curriculum and the content. Now, there's this kickoff and there's a culminating and then there's these one-to-one -one meetings that are taking place with teams and individuals and then there are five learning cycles and you can see right here in the wheel that we have each learning cycle is comprised of five steps. So there's an introduction to the topic or the concept, whatever the big idea is. Um, we usually do that in the form of a webinar. Uh, we offer the webinars at different times. So the same webinar will be offered at, at several times. So depending on your schedule, you can pick and choose um, when to attend. Then the second step in that is an exploration of the curriculum materials. We call them curriculum adventures. And there's also an action research track, a slice of uh, learning about how to do the action research project, which we don't do an individual teacher action research, it's group action research. So it's the team that, that uh, approaches the project. And there's a slice of that in each one of the learning cycles. So there's a little bit of exploring the content. And then there's practice. In most of the professional learning experience takes place inside an online community of practice. And inside this online community, there are gr separate groups to go to. Uh, teams will have a group. There's threaded discussions. There's videos. There's white papers. There's things that we do like virtual field trips. So all kinds of activities going on in there that participants will practice um, whatever the content or whatever the construct is that we're learning. Then there's an opportunity to take that content content one step further and apply it in an embedded context back in your school or your classroom or your organization. And, and the coaches are working with you. There's team-based application activities and individual-based activities. And then they give you, re, you receive feedback on what it, is, what it is that you did, on the activity that you did. So in each one of these five learning cycles, you kind of go through each one of these pieces. So after you've worked your way through the learning cycle, remember there are five of those. So here's, here's some 
uh, information about those learning cycles and what takes place. In the first learning cycle, what we're going to be doing is talking about connected learning. And this is, uh, has a lot to do with different kinds of network literacy. So we talk about the three-pronged approach to professional learning, which is based on communities of practice, per personal learning networks, and professional learning communities, next generation. Uh, we talk about building a digital footprint, understanding reputation management, and that also allows you to help your students understand that and also really looking closely at what are the ins and outs of developing a personal or professional learning network and what's the so what of that? What are you going to do once you've developed it? Um, and then we help you figure out how do you apply that learning directly in the classroom with your students. The second uh, learning cycle, so you go through all those five steps that were in the wheel and then we come back to to the uh, introduction, is becoming a connected educator. And in this one, we not only develop a Web 2.0 toolkit, so there's lots of familiarization with different kinds of technologies and tools in the, in the cloud, tools that allow you to be connected but learn collaboratively. But we also think about in these different methodologies, such as blended learning, flipped classroom, project-based learning, how will these tools inform that practice? So we do it from a sort of like a lens that's going to allow you to think about, you know, are these effective? Effective. This is the right tool for the task. When would this particular technology work better with this piece of pedagogy um, and this piece of content? You know, how do we look at the rep the relationship between pedagogy content and technology? And so, really thinking about assessing these tools um, as well as what are the tools for best practice. The third learning cycle has to do with using inquiry-based strategies. So we use the lens of what we call the five C's, and that's your typical communication, creativity, critical thinking, and um, collaboration. But we add a fifth one, which is crap detection. And uh, that was popularized by Neil, uh, I mean, that was actually came out of Neil Postman's work, and it was popularized by Howard Rheingold. And basically what we want you to do is to think about, you know, what about this is just assertions and what about it is evidence-based. Uh, we look at the TPAC model and sort of unpack that for you. We introduce something called the Connected Learner Scale, and we talk about how teaching by design, uh, Grant Wiggins' work, can really work nicely when you're developing online kind of experiences. So the fourth cycle is authentic assessment and scale. Now remember, we're doing an action research project as we go through these learning cycles. So about the time we get to cycle four, we've started to get some preliminary findings from your action research. And so we're, now we're thinking about how could we tweak it a little bit and scale this. So we talk about scale. We're also talking about authentic assessment. When we're using flipped classroom and blended learning and project-based learning, those other methodologies, what is the right way to assess? How can we use formative kinds of assessment strategies, authentic sort of assessment strategies? How does assessment change You know, when it becomes assessment for the learning, uh, not just assessment of the learning? Our fifth um, learning cycle is actually uh, keeping the momentum going. We're getting ready to wind down the year, and so we're looking at how to learn collaboratively. How do you go out and build collective intelligence in um, the connected space space of blogosphere and Twitterverse and um, in online community spaces. We look at distributive leadership during this time, teacher leadership, and connected leadership. So a um, lot going on in that particular learning cycle. Now. In terms of where is the learning going to take place, the two kickoffs right now, the two hosting organizations that we have, we have one here on the website, which is St. John's School in Houston, Texas. That will be the site for a kickoff and a culminating. And then, of course, all the online kinds of collaborations happen in the online community and in the webinar software and other tools that we introduce as we go through. We just have had the, um, also had Austin, Texas sign up. And so they're going to be doing a hosting and doing a kickoff and a culminating in Austin as well. And the Austin um, kickoff is October 10th and the Austin culminating is May 18th where the St. John's let me scroll up here for you the St. John's kickoff is September 26th and the culminating is June 1st now let's say that you don't live near any of those places okay no problem you can participate virtually at a reduced price or you can see about your organization being willing to host. And the hosting organization gets a free team. Um, they provide the place for us to meet for those two face-to-face, -face, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it if you're interested in finding out more. So 
We've got one community kicking off in September 26th, another community kicking off on October 10th. You can participate as a virtual participant, and virtual participants come to the kickoff and the culminating virtually. Um, someone carries them around, the team around on a laptop, and they participate in the breakout sessions, the discussions, the keynote, the whole thing. Um, and then they also participate in the culminating the same way. Or you can choose to travel. So if you don't live in that geographical location, you might want to send your team in. And we've had people do that before. And we do all the setup, help you get your hotel, help work everything out. The people that participate virtually and have to travel get come in at a reduced price for the team. And then folks that go through the full experience with both face-to-face, -face, um, they pay the full rate. So I guess that brings us to what is the rate? How, how much does it cost to participate? Remember, this is a team-based kind of learning experience. When I was trying to figure out how to price it, and actually I haven't changed the price in the, in the last nine years, I did a survey and I had a lot of people tell me, if you were going to go to a large three-day conference like ISTE or NACE, how, how much did it cost you to send a teacher? How much did it cost you to go? And the average fee was about um, $1,250. So by the time that you paid for the conference, the flight, the food, the hotel, any workshops, um, about $1,250. $1, $1,250. So I thought, well, that's for three days. This is a year long. This goes for a whole school year. There's two whole full day of workshop, and there's um, five learning cycles, five webinars, one-to-one -one coaching, feedback. So I thought, how could I charge, what could I charge for this? And I decided to just do it similar to what it costs to go to that national three-day conference, even though this is so much more. So $1,500 per person is what I charge to participate. And there are teams of five. So um, $1,500 per person for teams of five. It works out to be $7,500 for a year's worth of professional learning for a team. Or if you're coming in as a virtual participant or you're having to travel, then I reduce the rate to $5,000 for a team or $1,000 per person. So very reasonable in terms of a year's worth of professional learning. Now, what do you do if you want to if you want to participate? What's your next step? Well, what I you can go and look at the uh, frequently asked questions. You can read a little bit more about being a host and you can also read about how you get graduate credit for participating in this um, if you're interested in, in getting graduate credit. We do it through the University of North Dakota. But um, you can also to get started, just click on the Apply Now. And when you do that, it's going to take you to a very simple form that's going to say to me, hey, I'm really interested in, in having a one-to-one -one phone call with you. I, I'm, I'm at the place where, yeah, this sounds like something we might want to do, and we would like to get in touch with you. So that's it, basically. That's our connected learner experience, and I hope to be hearing from you soon. Thank you very much. I'm Cheryl Nussbaum Beach, the CEO and co-founder of Powerful Learning Practice. And if you would like to uh, get in touch or find out about the Connected Learner Experience, just go to plpnetwork.com. That's plpnetwork.com, Powerful Learning Practice, plpnetwork.com. And you will see the Connected Learner Experience tab here and can come in and apply. Um, if you'd like to email me, I'm Cheryl with an S. So S-H-E-R-Y-L, Cheryl with an S, at plpnetwork.com. Thanks for coming.